Hey guys, how's it going? In the last video, I was talking about how to load an RDF graph from the website or from the web or from the local or from the file that you have locally. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about the creating your own graph. So this is an example graph that we are going to try to create. So first of all, we want to understand what the RDF is. So RDF allows us to make statements about resources and a statement has a has always the following structure of a subject, predicate, and object. Now, an RDF statement expresses a relationship between two resources. The subject and object represent the two resources being related, and the predicate represents the nature of the relationship. Now, this relationship is phrased in a directional way, uh, subject from subject to object, and is called an RDF property. Now, because these statements uh, consist of the three elements, subject, predicate, and object, they are called triples. Okay, so how do we go about creating the triples? Now, the subject and objects of the triples make up the nodes in the graph, where the nodes are the URI references, blank nodes, or literals. Now, the RDF library, um, in the RDF library, these nodes uh, are represented by URI ref, the B node, and the literal classes. Now, the URI refs and the B node can be both thought as the resources, such as a person, company, a website, etc. Now, a blank node or a B node is a node where the exact URI is not known. So, in this in the example, we don't have such a blank node, by, but the URI reference is a node where the exact URI is known. And this URI reference can also be represent is also representing the properties in the graph. So it is representing the arcs between the nodes or the properties. Now a literals represent attribute values such as name and date. And the most common literal values are of XML data uh, type string or integer. Okay, so like I said, this is an example graph that we are going to create. Now, uh, in this case, Bob is a node and, uh, and Mona Lisa is node as well. And the arc or the property in between is a FYF topic of interest. Now, this graph can be informally represented by pseudocode like so. Like as a set of triples where Bob is a subject, the is a is a predicate or the property and the person is an object and so on and so forth. Okay, so how do we go about doing it in RDF or with RDF? So first of all, we want to define the node. And since we know their exact URI, we want to uh, use the URI reference class. So uh, we can create the nodes uh, just by passing the, the URI of the of the entity. So let's check out this entity, and we can see this is a Mona Lisa entity of the, inside the Wikidata. Now we can do it like so for the rest of the node. Now similarly, if we don't want to define, if we don't want to. Uh, always just give them the whole link. We can create namespace. Um, for example, from for node Bob and Alice, I'm going to define a custom namespace, which is going to be just an example.org. And then we can create nodes like so, just by specifying the namespace and putting the identifier of the entity. Now, uh, we can create literal values like so where we specify the value of the literal and additionally we can also specify the data type which in this case is going to be a uh, uh, date and in the second example it is going to be language now let's run this and uh, we can check out the um, the individual entities that we have created so this is this is the title and um, we can see that the value is Mona Lisa and then the language is English. So if we want to print it out only the English, we can do it like so. If we want to print out the value only, we can um, specify the value of the title. If we want to print out the whole literal, 
um, we can just type in the title. Okay, so let's actually start creating the graph and start adding all the triples inside the graph. So first of all, we want to we want to import the graph. We want to initialize the graph instance, and then we start adding a set of um, triples inside the graph. So we can do it with the add method, which takes a tuple of the form of three and uh, three um, uh, elements. So the first element is the subject, the second element is the object, uh, sorry, the predicate or the property, and the last uh, element is the object. So very, it is, it has very similar syntax to this. Now we can simply add all of these triples in. And now let's uh, take a look at the graph by serializing it. And as we can see, um, this is how the graph would look like in in turtle format. Let's change this to XML. This is how the graph would look like in, in XML, but in my opinion, turtle is more readable. So I'm going to leave it in turtle. Now, one thing that I don't like is that um, these namespaces have their um, some random uh, prefixes. So let's change this and let's actually give them proper prefixes. So we can do it by uh, binding the prefixes um, to a namespace. So for example, we want to bind the example namespace with the example prefix, the FYF namespace with the FYF prefix, etc., etc. So let's run this again and let's check out the graph. And we can see that the prefixes has been changed to whatever we specified up here. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, one thing we can do is we can check out the uh, all the namespaces and prefixes that are defined inside the graph. So we can simply create a loop which is going to iterate over all the namespaces. And um, yeah, this can be very useful if we are importing the graph from a website from from the web. So we can, by doing so, we can simply inspect all the prefixes and all the namespaces that are part of the graph. So yeah, these are all the prefixes. Now, let's uh, say that we have made the mistake inside the graph and we want to replace um, some, of the, some of the values. So instead of removing the triple from the graph and just adding a new one, we can simply use the set method when again we are going to pass it in a tuple containing uh, three elements again the first element is the subject second element is the predicate and the last object uh, last element is an object so for example in this case we want to change a, a birth date of bob to be a uh, first of first a first of january of 1919 1990 and then we also want to change the title of Mona Lisa to have a different title and we also want to change the language of this string so let's run this let's serialize it and inspect the graph and we can see that the date has changed as well as the title of of this uh, Mona Lisa entity just in comparison before we had the title Mona Lisa and then date was uh, this. Okay, and the uh, uh, last thing that I want to show you is how we can actually remove the data, remove the triples from the graph. Again, we're going to use the remove method and which is going to take a tuple containing three elements, again, subject, predicate, object. Now, if we want to remove all the, all the triples, um, containing this node, we can just supply it by um, specifying the node and then for the rest of the uh, elements as none. And if you run this, this is going to remove all the triples containing this specific subject. So if you look at the previous example, we have removed this triple. Now, if we want to remove everything about, about our I don't know, Mona Lisa entity, we can simply pass in 
Mona Lisa. And uh, let's run this, and we can see that this uh, Mona Lisa node uh, has been all of the all of the triples. So these two triples have been removed as well. Yeah. So this is this should give you a general idea of what is possible to do with the RDF library. And um, yeah, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about um, navigating the graph and um, using a Sparkle queries to uh, get extract the data we want from the graph. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.